For the third play of Christmas, my favorite game gave me Nebula and Drang, Rocket and the Hood, and a mech and eight scary minions. Happy holidays and Merry Christmas, everyone, and welcome back to the 12 plays of Christmas. My name is Josh, and in this series, I'm continuing to play my 12 favorite heroes versus my 12 favorite villains. This is the third game in the series, and we're going to be pairing up Nebula versus Drang, and Drang brought along the Crossfire's crew modular encounter set, so I think this is going to be a really fun time. And for Nebula, we randomly drew Justice, so the deck that I built is, since you're playing Drang, and it already comes with the Milano, and Nebula already has a ship built in, I thought, why not lean hard into that theme? And so I brought along a Helicarrier and a Sky Destroyer. That's right, we're leaning into the shield archetype for this one. I knew when I was going to have to build three Justice decks this month, that one of them was surely going to need to be shield. It's actually not something I've played with very much, and I thought this would be a good opportunity. Now, I know Nebula is probably not traditionally considered a good shield hero, or at least not better than anybody else, but I don't know who the third justice hero is going to be, so I don't know if they're going to be any better suited. And I liked the idea of having all the ships on the table. So this deck is called Nebula Commands a Fleet, and hopefully I can get all four of my ships out on the table. Since we're going to be doing shield, I brought along just one field agent. We've got Agent 13, Quake, Monica Chang, so I brought two surveillance teams, and Mockingbird and Nick Fury. So those are all the allies. I have one chance encounter just because there are five side schemes in the villain deck. I don't have one way or another to guarantee I'm going to be seeing them, so I just figured one would be nice to grab. I'd like to get Agent 13 out or Gamora, Nebula's signature ally, so that'll be nice if I get that. Two government liaisons to help pay for all of these shield cards. Two meditations because I'm hoping to spend a lot of time in Alter Ego because I'm playing Nebula. And just uh, one power in all of us and the three doubles. And then because I am hoping to spend a lot of time in Alter Ego, I've got a few different ways to try to control the villain and so that I don't lose the schemes. I've got two copies of Global Logistics to help me manipulate the encounter deck to try to keep the boosts low when the villain schemes. And when not necessary, this is actually a really nice card to use on your own deck, I think, just to guarantee your next hand has cards you want to see. I've got one Sonic Rifle. It's something I think Nebula would play with anyway. I really leaned into the theme hard on this one, largely because I suspect, and I might eat my words, but I suspect this shouldn't be too hard. Drang just isn't that terribly difficult of a villain, even on Expert. And I think Nebula is pretty strong, and Shield is really strong. So I figured I would takes the opportunity to inject a little bit of extra theme in the deck, but this card also works very well, just hoping to get to Alter Ego occasionally, but I didn't want to go too hard into the Confuse, partially because I did that a lot with the Rocket deck, and I just want to try some different ways to stay in Alter Ego. That's what the Global Logistics are there for, And but we do have the One Rifle, and then Under Surveillance because the main scheme only goes up to eight, and it goes up by two a turn, so it's really easy to lose this scheme if I try to stay in Alter Ego. So it would be nice to get a van on it to stay in. I know I did that with the hood, but that's a pretty common just strategy. I don't want to go too crazy trying to make these decks different from each other. And then I've got a crew quarters. I do have another similar idea with Nebula as I did with Rocket that hopefully she'll just kind of be able to tank the hits, flip down and heal whenever possible. I don't want to be chump blocking too much. And Daughters of Thanos, this is pretty much the only team up card I like to use in solo because I do really want to get Gamora out if possible and being able to draw three cards is just so helpful. And then of course, Nebulous cards. So let me get this shuffled up. I'm trying a bit of a different setup here. So I'm hoping the sound will be better. The popping peas on the lapel mic that I've been using, just I can't seem to figure out how to get rid of them. So I've got a setup here. I'm running my phone through my computer and using a better mic. So you'll have to let me know if you think this looks or sounds any different, hopefully better. And uh, I just set it up before this video, so I certainly could refine it some more. But this is what I'm going with for this one, and I hope it's at least decent. So like I said, I'm playing Drang in Expert, and we've got the Crossfires crew in here. And uh, of course, Long Shot's in here somewhere because I'm always going to be using him. And so there's only a few minions. There's like five minions in here, five side schemes, and then there's the ship command as well. So just a ton of treacheries. And if you've never seen how Drang works, he's really a pretty straightforward villain. And his typical recommended modular set is the Band of Badoon. That is just uh, 10 minions. So usually when you play Drang, it's a real minion swarm, which is fun. 
So this one's going to be a little bit different than how he normally plays. And then he also has the Badoon ship, which this gets a counter on it occasionally. And when it gets to four counters, you remove them and deal two indirect damage to each player. So going to have to deal with a little bit of extra incoming damage every now and then, but that's pretty much all he's got going on. He's not that exciting, I guess, of a villain. He's pretty straightforward, but I just really always have a good time when I play him. So he did make it into my 12 favorites. I really like the ones that are pretty standard sometimes. Like you don't have to build a certain kind of deck. You don't have to worry about anything weird. Like if you're playing, say, Collector 1 from this same box, you really have to factor that into your deck build. And that, that can be fun sometimes too. But for casual play, I like a villain that I can just throw on the table and I don't have to worry about them doing anything too crazy. You know, he's going to do some extra indirect every now and then, but that's all. And for me, when I play, I'm all about the heroes and I'm all about the deck that I build. So I'm always excited just to see how my deck plays. So I don't want the villain doing anything too crazy most of the time. Again, once in a while, it is nice to have a crazy challenge or a villain does something weird and you got to build for it. And it's nice that we have options for both. So if you're wondering why Drang is one of my favorites, even though he's not anything too special, I suppose, that's why. He's not too hard. He's not too weird. And I think he's just fun to play against. Okay, so we are ready to get started. Like I said, this new setup is kind of weird. I have to reach around all these cords, and I'm hoping to find a better way to set it up. But this is what we are going with for today. So our opening hand is Strength, Combat Ready. I'm really hoping to see one of her techniques. I'll kind of explain how Nebula works here once we get started. All right, I'm seeing a lot of Justice. Okay, didn't really get any of her techniques. So her whole thing, similar to how her villain works, which is really cool. She has uh, eight technique upgrades in her deck. And they all cost one, and they all do a special ability at the beginning of your hero turn, and they all also give her a constant ability while they're in play, and they're just, they're so neat. And she's kind of like Black Widow, where if you play one in her alter ego state, you get to draw, in her case, two cards. Black Widow only draws one. And then when you're in your hero form, when your turn begins, you have to trigger all of the techniques that you have in play. You don't have a choice. You get to choose the order. But, so it makes for a really interesting thing. She basically prepares all these things these upgrades that are sort of attached to her body, I guess, and then they just automatically fire, which is a little unreliable, certainly, but I think it makes for fun. I, I like the heroes that, for as much as I like the villains that are pretty straightforward, I like the villain, I like the heroes that are less so. So you never quite know for sure what you're going to get, but you definitely want to see one in your opening hand because you hope to play one to draw two cards. So I'm probably going to be mulliganing a decent amount. And something else I need to be thinking about as Drang does start with his Spear in play in Expert, because he starts on Stage 2, and he has Stalwart. So even if I was able to confuse him to stay in Alter Ego, I can't, and I have to go to Hero Form to get rid of this, and it's costly. And one thing with Nebula, it's nice if you can spend the first turn in Alter Ego to get some techniques out and draw some cards, but it's kind of difficult to do against Drang. So we do have to finish setting up the main scheme. I always forget to do that. It starts with two thread on it, and it goes up by two every turn. Oh, and I just realized I wanted to show the Milano as part of my fleet, but that does start in play. So actually, I'm just going to redo my whole opening hand. And since these plays are pretty casual, I'm not going to start over and cut all this out. We're just going to roll with it in the video. Normally, I would just start over with all this nonsense. But I got 12 of these to film this month, so I can't be too picky. So... That will hopefully help me get a better opening hand. So yeah, the Milano starts in play, and it is a support that is just a free resource every turn, but there are a lot of treachery cards and other effects in the encounter deck as part of its modular set that is going to cause me to exhaust the Milano. So there's a lot of times I won't get to use it as a free resource because it's probably going to be exhausted from the villain phase. All right, let's try that opening hand again. There we go. So this is one of her techniques. I'll just kind of show how they work. It costs one. And it says, well, in hero form, she gets retaliate one, and then special is deal four damage to an enemy. And that special is going to fire automatically when you start your turn in hero form. And that's important. If I go from alter ego to hero, these don't fire. It's at the beginning of your hero turn. So if you can stay in alter ego a couple turns, you might be able to build up a bunch of these, and then they'll fire all at once on your next hero turn. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. Well, at least I got one technique, and I did get a meditation. I didn't get anything too expensive to pay for it. It would be really nice to get out the Helicarrier or Agent 13, something like that with the meditation, but I'm going to be able to draw two more cards with Weapon Master, so it's kind of tricky. I won't know for sure. I'm definitely going to keep the meditation and the Weapons Master 
Combat Ready is a really cool card of Nebula's that you play it in Ultra Ego, and I can other shuffle two technique upgrades from my discard pile back into my deck, which is typically what I use it for. But you can also use it to discard cards from the top of your deck to spit a technique out, and then it immediately activates. So you don't know what you're going to get. It's really fun. But the one thing is it doesn't interact with your Ultra Ego ability to draw two cards because you're not playing it, you're putting it into play. So you do get a free one, but if you haven't played another technique that turn, you're not going to get to draw the two cards. Um, so definitely want to surveillance. I'm liking the look of all the surveillance team. I use Monica Chain to pull these out. So we're definitely going to mulligan that. And then chance encounter. There's no side schemes in play as much as I was hoping to play this maybe in the middle of the game. I'm not going to hold on to it because I don't know how long it'll be till I get a side scheme. So we're going to draw two more. We got Quake and oh yeah, I'm going to be bumping my camera. This setup, everything's a lot closer than I'm used to. So hopefully I don't shake it too much. All right, well, this is the hand we're rolling with. I think out of all the cards in my hand, Quake is the most expendable. So we're going to use her to play this Weapon Master to the table. And when I start my turn in hero form, that's going to trigger to deal four damage to an enemy. But more importantly, right now, it's going to let me draw two cards. So I get Unyielding Persistence and Daughters of Thanos. Okay, I was really hoping to draw an expensive card to make Meditation worth using. All right, next we're going to play combat ready for its ability to just spit a technique out and trigger it. So let's see what we get. You just start flipping cards till I find a technique. Hopefully it doesn't take too long. I don't want to chew through my whole deck. There's eight of them in here. So boy, here we go. Seeing everything else. Oh man, losing all my cool shield cards. And there we go. So wide stance is going to pop out. And then a special is I get to look at the top three cards in the encounter deck. Discard one and put the others back in any order. So I get to trigger that immediately because of combat ready. So we're going to look at the top three cards here. I can discard one and then put the other two back. So what I could do is set up an easy villain phase here to hopefully stay in alter ego. He won't scheme out. And I think I might do that because I can give himself as I can give him a zero boost. And then I definitely don't want this rogue vessel coming out. So we're just going to discard that. It'll be the one we discard for wide stance. And then. We're going to set it up like this, so the boost is zero. So he's only going to scheme for four. Oh, if I don't remove some threat, that's still going to pop. All right, well, we're still going to set it up that way, and then I'll figure out whether or not I'm going to hero form. I don't have any allies, so if I don't do something about that threat, it's going to pop. I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to exhaust Nebula to play Meditation. Play a card from your hand, reducing its resource cost by three if you exhaust your Alter Ego. So we're going to play Under Surveillance for free, basically, and that is going to add four more to the main scheme so we get that up to 12. so now we should be able to safely stay in ultra ego except i do want to get rid of that spear and i have the resources in my hand to do it so i think we're still going to go the hero form and then i'm going to discard a wild a mental and a punch to meet the requirements to discard drang's spear so he is no longer stalwart and he's not hitting us too hard and it'll still be nice to have the zero boost since I'm probably, so I'm probably just going to take this attack to the face. And try to keep my cards a little straighter too. I get real sloppy when I'm playing. And it probably doesn't look very nice on the screen. And then I think the last thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to use the Milano. You can use that to remove threat from a lot of the schemes in these Guardians and these Galaxies Most Wanted scenarios. And it works on almost every scheme in this deck. So it's just a really nice way to control the threat. I didn't put any justice. I didn't put any thwart I didn't put any threat removal events in this deck. This is the second justice deck in a row I've played that didn't have a single threat removal event, which is kind of weird. But that's just kind of how it worked out. So I'm going to be relying on the Milano mostly to remove threat for me probably. And then hopefully Nebula can do everything else herself. So we're going to stand everything up and call it a turn. We draw five cards. We get Nick, another meditation, Ooh, a double. Okay, looking like playing Nick might be a real possibility. Another Technique and another technique. Okay. So it looks like we have a pretty good hand for next turn. And now this gets two. He is attacking us for three, and we know the boost is going to be zero. Now I have to remember, thanks to this, I currently have Retaliate one. And thanks to this, I take one less damage from each attack. These are very easy to forget. You get really focused on the specials that are going to trigger when your hero turn starts. But you really need to remember, you get some really powerful constant effects. Now, they only last until the next turn, usually. But I'm going to take one less damage and do a retaliate. So we definitely want to do that. So he's going to attack us for three. And then we know the boost is going to be zero. 
Nebula starts with nine health, but she's gonna take one less damage from this, so it's only gonna be two damage, so we're gonna go down to seven. And then Drang only starts with 14 health, even on Expert, and so he goes down to 13, he takes a retaliate damage. So that worked out pretty nicely. And then we know our encounter card. Oh, I did forget. When you put the threat on the main scheme, you also add a charge up counter to the ship. And when it gets four counters, it pops and you do two damage. And also when he schemes, he gets another counter. And then when you go to a stage three in expert mode, he puts a counter on it every time he activates. So it'll really start pumping out the damage after a while. So we caught all that stuff up. And then our encounter card is going to be the Badoon Engineer. After he engages me or activates against me, I resolve the Badoon ship's charge-up ability. So he puts another counter on the ship because he engaged me, and then if I don't kill him when he activates against me next turn, he's going to put another one on there. So probably want to get rid of him, but that is not going to be hard because now that it is back to my turn, I trigger both of these automatically. I get to choose the order, but I don't have a choice. And so the Weapons Master deals four damage to an enemy. We'll just go ahead and use that to take out this Engineer. We don't want him hanging around. And then Wide Stance is going to let me look at the top three cards again. And discard one and put the other two back in any order. So again, I get to set up a nice villain phase. I absolutely love all the scrying that Nebula has. And then the Global Logistics with Shield is going to make that easier too. So it looks like we could set up another zero boost pretty easily. And then we could just have another Engineer pop out if we really want to. And that is probably... The way to go though I kind of wouldn't mind I think I'd rather see a side scheme come out because they're really easy to handle so we're actually going to discard the engineer we're going to set up a zero boost and then we're just going to let master plan trigger to dig for a side scheme now it didn't matter there but one thing I want to emphasize about nebula that I think is easy to mistake is when you trigger these they actually all stay in play until you're done triggering them and then they get discarded and it didn't really matter much for these but there are some like there's one that gives her overkill and piercing for example and you know you want to trigger this one to deal four damage and that's going to have overkill and piercing even if you triggered that card first because they all stay in play until you've triggered all of them and then they all get discarded that's a, a tricky little thing with nebula that's easy to miss but it can be quite nice sometimes to keep them all in play before you discard them but yeah, and there's this one, like this is in my hand, it says that I ignore the guard keyword, the patrol keyword, and the crisis icon. If this were in play, even if I triggered this one first, and then chose to do the four damage, I could still ignore the guard keyword if I wanted to, because this would still be in play. So, we know he is only going to scheme for two if we decide to go back to Alter Ego, which we probably will, because that's just how I like to play Nebula. The problem is I've got Nick in my hand, and that always makes me want to stay in hero form, because I'd hate to waste that block. But I really prefer to play my techniques in Alter Ego, and it's all I've got. So this might end up being kind of a weird turn, but I am going to go to Alter Ego, even though I've got Nick. So we are going to flip to Alter Ego form. We're going to exhaust to play Meditation to reduce the cost by three, and then kind of overpaying for Nick, but we'll also use this double. I just really... Oh, no, no, no. I'll just use the Milano. Yeah, even better. So I have three for the Meditation, one from the Milano. And it's not a hero resource, so I can use an alter ego. So he comes out. I'm going to use him to draw three cards. So we get a weapons master, more damage, a field agent for some shield support, and wide stance. So we've got a ton of our techniques. Now, I only get to draw the two cards for playing one in alter ego once, but it's still pretty nice. And let's go ahead and do that now. I think I definitely want to get the cutthroat ambition out. That's the one that removes threat, and we're going to have a bunch of threat to remove when we get back into hero form. So we definitely want to play that. I'm going to use the wide stance, as nice as this one is, to get the cutthroat ambition out. That's the threat removal one. And I'm going to draw two cards for playing a technique, crew quarters, and more money. I've got more resources than I need here, actually. Uh, let's see. Next, I just want to play a bunch of techniques so we can be really well set up for our next hero turn. I'm probably just going to end up overpaying drastically because of all these doubles in my hand that don't need to be used for anything expensive. So we're just going to use a genius to bring out evasive maneuvering. That's going to stun or confuse. We're going to use the energy. Ah, that's really unfortunate how it worked out this way, but I don't know what else to do. I want to play all these cards, so I don't want to hold on to the doubles uh, to get the weapons master out. And then I would rather have the field agent than the crew quarters. So I'm going to use the crew quarters to pay for the field agent. He gets three counters on him. And whenever you would take consequential damage on a shield, 
ally, he can basically prevent that damage, so you can keep your shield allies alive longer. Now, Nick is a shield ally, but we're not going to worry about preventing his consequential because he's going to go away anyway. We're just going to have him remove this threat. We want to keep that low. We're just trying to get set up for a couple turns. And then once we hopefully have our fleet out, I'm not going to drag the game out intentionally to get the whole fleet out, but I would really like to get at least a few of the ships if possible. And since we discarded so much of our tech on the first turn, I'm afraid I might have lost some of them. But that is everything we can do. So we're going to ready everything up. I didn't forget anything. We're going to draw six cards. One, two, three, four, five, six. And so we get Cutthroat Ambition, Monica to get some surveillance teams out. There's the Nebula ship, so that's nice. Surveillance team, Sky Destroyer, and Government Liaison. Okay. Really wish I had all those doubles I used on the last turn, but we'll just have to see how it goes, how much of that I can afford. Now, it's a shame we're going to waste Nick for a block, but that's just how it worked out. So let's see. This goes up by two. And then this is going to get its third one, and it's about to trigger, actually, because now he is going to scheme, and we know that's going to be for two plus zero. So he's going to add two more threat to the main schemes, up to four of 12, thanks to the van. But when he schemes, that adds a fourth one to this. And when it has four, you simply take two indirect damage. So Nick wasn't wasted after all, actually, because we'll just put it on Nick, since you can put indirect damage on your allies. That, that worked out just fine, actually. And then... We know our encounter card is going to be master plan. This is from the expert set. Place four threat on each side scheme, but if there are none, you discard cards from the top of the encounter deck until one is discarded, and then you reveal it. So I think out of the expert set, that is by far the weakest card. Sometimes it can chew through a lot of the encounter deck, which might lead to an acceleration token. Oh, we lost long shot. I don't think that's that big of a deal. Uh, I say that, and there's five of them in here. But we are having a heck of a time finding one. Okay, oppressive armada. Yeah, this one's real easy. It's got going to have four threat, but I can use the Milano to remove three of it if I want to. Not a big deal at all. Now, if I don't get rid of that, it's going to give me an extra encounter card, and we don't want that. So, And then, so that is the end of the villain phase. Nick goes away at the end of the round, but he took two damage for us. That was actually really nice. And it starts back to us. And since I'm not in hero form, my techniques don't fire. I'm going to get to draw two cards because I'm definitely going to play one of these. I'm going to use the surveillance team. To pay for Cutthroat Ambition, that's going to remove three more threats, so we're definitely going to be good for that. And so I get to draw two cards for playing that technique. I get, oh, uh, Gamora, such an awesome ally, and the other government liaison. It's going to run me out of my deck, which means I'm going to have an extra encounter card. So I definitely want to get rid of that hazard side scheme so I don't have two extra encounter cards. All right, shuffle that up, and let us not forget that. So now I've got all these cards in my hand. Let me figure out what I'm going to do next. The only free resource I currently have is the Milano. I don't have any in my hand, so I'm going to have to be real choosy about what I play. All right. Well, unfortunately, I'm not going to be leaning too hard into the shield side of things because I really want to play Nebula Ship and Gamora. So that's the direction we're going to go. We're going to discard these two cards to play Nebula Ship. So we are starting to build our fleet, but we discarded the Sky Destroyer. I don't know if we'll get back around to it or not. And then we're going to use Nebula's ship, Monica Chang, and the government liaison to bring out Gamora. Just put her right there. Continue to bump the camera. I'm going to really have to figure this out. Now, when Gamora comes out, this is awesome. After you play her, you get to choose a technique upgrade you control and resolve its special ability. So I can pick one of these four and do whatever it says. And that's one of the neat things about Nebula is even though most of the time her techniques are just going to fire automatically, at the beginning of your turn so you don't have a lot of control over it she has gamora which lets you pick and choose one and she also has other cards in her deck that allow you to fire them during the hero turn as well so you do have some options her kit is pretty much designed all around firing these so and i think the most obvious one to use would probably be the evasive maneuvering i can stun the villain so i'm going to go ahead and stun drang with that and then i'm going to flip to hero form i think Nebula and Gamora are just going to get rid of this. I am going to start doing damage <laughs> eventually, but I do really like to manage the threat as much as possible. Gamora takes a damage for that. And then I still have the Milano, so we'll just go ahead and remove three from here because I didn't end up using it as a resource. Maybe I should have to keep one of these cards, but so that is just how we're going to handle that. And then hopefully we get a relatively easy villain phase. We can start dealing some damage. But we've got our ship out now, which is going to be nice. And so 
we are going to draw. We have Unyielding Persistence. That gives her a tough. This is lethal intent. This is how you can trigger her upgrades during her turn. So say I play Unyielding Persistence, and I can play lethal intent to trigger that before it gets back around to the next hero phase, and it fires automatically. Meditation, Wide Stance, and Genius. Okay, that should be fun. Now we go to the Villain phase. This gets two, so it's up to three of 12. That gets one counter. And now he wants to attack us, but he is stunned, so he can't. Now we're going to have two encounter cards. We have no idea what they are. I think pretty much the first time. So it's going to be a little scary. We're getting, oh, Nebula's Obligation. I can flip to Alter Ego. And I might choose to, because that means I can preserve these for another turn and really build up a big pile, which could be fun. And then I can either Exhaust, which... I do have a meditation in my hand, but I don't really have anything to play with it, so that would be fine. Or I can discard two of my technique upgrades. I don't want to do that. So yeah, we're going to flip to Alter Ego and Exhaust. That will remove this from the game. And hopefully we don't end up regretting that. Our next card is the Side Scheme from Crossfire's Crew, Out for Blood. Now, when revealed, deal one damage to the friendly character with a few remaining hit points. That is going to be Gamora. And if she was defeated that way, we'd have to do that again. So it could just ping off all of your allies, which is really cool. Crossfire's a sniper. And all his cards kind of come out and attack your allies, which is just a really neat thing. That has two threat on it, so it's easy to get rid of, but it does some damage when it comes out. It can really wreck your board, so I'm glad it's easy to get rid of, because it's pretty nasty otherwise. But that was the villain phase, so back to our hero turn. And since we started in Ultra Ego, again, the techniques don't go off. So we can do something pretty cool here. I'm going to play Meditation for a resource to get... Unyielding Persistence on the table, and that's going to let me draw two cards because I'm in Alter Ego. So we're going to draw Global Logistics and a Sonic Rifle. Now I'm going to flip to Hero Form, and I have this card, Lethal Intent. Choose up to X Technique Upgrades you control, resolve each of their special abilities, and it costs X. So basically, however many I want to activate is how many resources I pay. I've got some resources in my hand, so I just choose how many of these I want to do, and then I can trigger them now. So I definitely think I'm going to want to do the tough status. That's the one I just played. And I could stun him again, which would be nice, or confuse him for a future... Yeah, I'll probably confuse him, because I'm just going to use Gamora to block, most likely, at this point. And so I definitely want to do those, and then we'll go from there. Let me see how much I want to pay for. All right, I think we're going to pay one resource, two, three, four, for lethal intent, so we're going to be able to trigger four of our technique upgrades this is so cool so we're going to do this one to give nebula a tough status that's nice we're going to stun or confuse an enemy we're going to go ahead and confuse drag that'll be nice for next time we want to flip down we are going to remove three threat from a scheme we'll just go ahead and get rid of this side scheme it's a little bit overkill but we really want that gone and let's just go ahead and hit trang for four start doing some damage so he is going down to nine so cool now we're going to keep gamora for a future block and we are also going to play global logistics from our hand exhausting the field agent you have to exhaust a shield card and i can look at the top four cards of a player deck or the encounter deck discard any number of those and put the others on the top or bottom of that deck in any order so it just gives you so much freedom and control over what's going to happen we're going to do the villain deck because he is going to attack us. It's not going to matter because we're going to block with Gamora, but maybe if I can set up something easy, we won't waste a block with Gamora. So we can get rid of whatever we want. We can put cards on the top or the bottom. So, like, for example, I really wouldn't care if we got this as an encounter card because it's just so easy, and we don't really like any of the rest of these cards. So what I think I'm going to do is he is going to attack us. We'll go ahead and set this up as his boost card for zero, and we'll just... Well, we're tough, actually. So do I want to waste the tough on that? Yeah, that's fine. And then we can let this be our encounter card because it's so easy. And then I don't like either of these cards, but we'll set that up. Let's see. If I think about it, if we flip to Alter Ego next turn, he's going to be confused. So I could be setting up my encounter card for the next phase, which I don't want either of those to be my encounter card. So yeah, we'll just discard those and we'll let this be how it plays out this round. So that was the Global Logistics. I absolutely love that card. And then I have the Milano left. If I wanted to, I could exhaust it to remove that three threat. Or I could play the Wide Stance that's still in my hand. See, I've got five techniques to trigger next turn. So 
I think I will just go ahead and remove the threat. I'm just, I'm always very cautious with threat. That's just kind of how I play. And I probably will hold on to the wide stance just to make sure I have a technique to play because since I have five of them in play, there's a really good chance I won't end up drawing one. And we're going to be going to alter ego. So that's what we're going to do. And so we're just readying up here, continuing to prepare for the future. And then we draw, well, okay, I got both my wide stances, weapon master. Okay, now that's all of the techniques. Dang it. Daughters of Thanos. Oh, I'm really glad. Yeah, I'm definitely going to keep Gamora now so I can play this next turn. That'll be cool. And uh, combat ready will be really nice as well. Oh, yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited. I love Nebula. is so much fun. When she came out, I think I was calling her my favorite hero for a little while. It's just, I just think this style of gameplay is so much fun. I love the Alter Ego stuff. You watch my stuff. You know I'm always going on and on about Alter Ego. So the heroes that play with that well. And I like the random sort of nature of the techniques. You don't quite know for sure. But kind of like Scarlet Witch. Like you have some control, but you don't always have control, which I think is fun. So we're going up to two here. The Badoon ship gets a counter. Hopefully I haven't missed any of those. And then he is attacking us for three. I think I'm just going to let that happen. And I should be aware what are my special abilities right now. Let's see. My attacks gain piercing and overkill. I, gain, I do have retaliate. And oh, I had plus one of my stats, but I was exhausted. So that didn't matter. Oh, and stalwart. I forgot I even had that. That's awesome. And I ignore, okay, I was looking to see if I had the one that reduced threat, or reduced uh, incoming damage. Those are, the, those are in my hand right now, but I do have retaliate, so I'm going to go ahead and take this. Oh, and she's tough, so that worked out well. So I took no damage there, but I do have retaliate, so I'll ping him back, down to eight. And then, oh yeah, so this would have been the boost. I was scared for a second, I thought I was letting him advance. And then this is going to be our counter card, spatial positioning. It's just a side scheme of three and has Amplify, but we can easily get rid of it with Milano if we want to. So thank you, Global Logistics, for making that the easiest villain phase ever. Now comes back to us, and we get to do all these fun things. And so we just kind of have to decide. We can remove three threat from a scheme. I feel like I might as well just use that on this just to get rid of it. And we can deal four damage to an enemy. So, and I'm putting these in my discard pile, but again, they all stay in play until you're done resolving them. So if it was going to matter, you would want to make sure you keep them in play in case, like, I cared about having piercing and overkill right now. You know, that would still be in play. Remove three threat from a scheme. Don't mind if I do. Just clearing the entire board before I play a single card from my hand. I get another tough status. Awesome. And I can either choose to stun or confuse an enemy. Well, he's already confused, so stun. How awesome was that? And I still get to do my whole turn. Ah, Nebula's the best. So now that he's stunned and confused and I'm tough, he has four health. There's no threat on the main scheme. We are in such good shape. We're going to use the ship, Nebula ship, and uh, Daughters of Thanos. I get to draw three cards because I have Nebula and Gamora in play. So Surveillance Team, Quake, and Meditation. Now I'm really looking to move into damage mode if possible, I think, because... We're not, it's not that we're super set up or anything, but just everything's going so well, I might as well start trying to go in for the kill. And if we're very, very lucky, I'll only have to play one game in this video. I'm two for two, and the first two where I had to play two games for various reasons, and maybe we can keep this one a little bit shorter if I only have to play one. So I think I'm going to go ahead and attack with Nebula. I have a meditation in my hand, but I don't really need the resources. I'm going to... I'm going to have plenty, so yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and attack with Nebula for two, bring him down to two, and then if I kill him and move him on to the next stage, you discard four cards off the top of the encounter deck and you get every minion, which when the Brotherhood of Badoon is in there is scary, but this time there's not that many, so let's see how many minions he has left in his deck. He, We've discarded one, two, three, four. Okay, there's literally only one minion left in the deck. It's Crossfire. There's basically a 50-50 chance we could spit him out, which wouldn't be the end of the world if we did. But he does have Quick Strike, so if I'm going to do it, I should make sure to do it in Alter Ego. It's good to be aware of those types of things while you're playing. You can kind of make your experience a little bit easier. So, yeah, I think I'm just going to go to Alter Ego. So we're going to flip over. And might as well use the Milano for a resource at some point because 
There's no threat on the board, thanks to how awesome the beginning of the turn was. So we'll go ahead and exhaust that. We've only built a very small fleet so far. Uh, you know what? Before I do that, I want to play combat ready. Now that I'm in Alter Ego, I'm going to shuffle two of my techniques back into my deck before I draw any cards, because I would just like to draw those largely. So we're going to Weapons Master back for more damage. And it's really nice. The Stun and Confuse one, you pretty much always shuffle back in just because that one, there's only one of those in the deck, and it's just so strong. So we're going to put those two back in before we do anything else to draw cards. All right. Now we'll use Nebula Ship, or we already used that. Now we'll use the Milano to play Weapons Master. It's going to let me draw two cards. I get another Weapons Master. Excellent. Lots of damage. And Agent 13. I just, I don't think I'm going to have to do the, the shield thing. I don't think I'm going to get a chance. I've just been playing Nebula the whole time, which is fine. Sometimes shield can kind of take over your hero. And in this case, Nebula's just doing it on her own. And I am okay with that. Now, I do kind of wish I wasn't exhausted so I could use Meditation to play Agent 13, but maybe I'll hold on to those for next turn. I wouldn't normally hold two cards in my hand, but I'm kind of tempted to do that. Now, before I play any other cards, I do want to see if I end up with Crossfire or not. So I'm going to attack with Gamora, which is going to take her out, but that's all right. If we do get through our deck again, I wouldn't mind drawing her and playing her again. So now that does two damage to Drang. Knocks him down to zero. I set those aside, but I'll try to remember to put them back. So he flips over. When revealed, discard the top four cards per player of the encounter deck. Each time a minion is discarded this way, put it into play engaged with the player who is engaged with the fewest minions. So usually this ends up spitting out a few minions and you kind of spread them around the table. But we'll see if we're going to get crossfire or not. One, two. Yep, there he is. So we get crossfire. Three and four. So he comes out. He has quick strike, but we want the alter ego first. And then when he attacks, he attacks the friendly character with the fewest remaining hit points and with overkill and range. So it actually comes directly after your weakest ally. And you can still defend them, but if you don't, that damage, instead of going undefended on your hero, would go to that the person he's going after specifically, which is pretty neat. And so now he continues to be stunned and confused. He has 18 health. Let's see how quickly we can do something about that. Now, not going to worry about paying the surveillance team. We're going to discard that for the other Weapons Master. We want to make sure that's guaranteed 8 damage. Uh, we don't get to draw any cards. We already did that part. And I think since I really am planning on holding on to Meditation and the Agent 13, just because even though I don't have the Sky Destroyer or the Helicarrier, she's still nice to get out there. Or do I care? Okay, I don't think I care that much about trying to get Agent 13 on the table, so I'm going to use these two as resources to play Quake. She's really nice to have when you're in Alter Ego. Now, I want to see, I have one, two, I have three of my techniques in the discard pile, four, five, two in my hand, six, seven. So seven of the eight are accounted for, so there's a really good chance I won't draw one. So I'm tempted to hold on to one of these wide stances for next turn to guarantee I can play it, and then just discard the other one because I don't have any more resources. Or I could just discard one to play the other. Yeah, it's fine. I'm going to discard one wide stance to play the other. It's not that big of a deal. And Quake can go ahead and attack. Uh, do I care about trying to take out Crossfire? I'm at seven. If I attack him for two now, then she'll be able to finish him off when he tries to scheme. Yeah, let's go for a clean board. We're not in that big of a hurry. So we'll put, oops, he's not dead yet. We'll put two damage on Crossfire with Quake. And she would take a damage. Oh, I can't use a field agent because it's a hero interrupt and I'm in alter ego form. That's fine. Quake can take a damage. I could have prevented that consequential, but it just didn't work out that way. All right, going to ready up everything, and then we're going to draw six cards. One, two, three, four, five, six. We got strength, crew quarters, global logistics, energy, lethal intent. Okay, we didn't get a uh, technique to play, which is unfortunate, but we are going to be able to do something really cool with that lethal intent. So I think we are in really good shape. Now we put... Uh, the third counter on the Badoon ship, because we're going to be putting the two threat on the main scheme. Did that in the opposite order, but it doesn't really matter. Now, Drang wants to scheme, but he's confused. That would have put another counter on. We would have taken the damage, but he was confused, so we don't have to activate his ability. And now Crossfire is going to scheme. He's going to put two more on the main. And then she uh, Quake says, 
after minion schemes, exhaust her to deal two damage to that minion. So she's going to go ahead. Darn it. I'm sorry. I keep bumping the camera and making it shake. I apologize. Uh, that is going to knock crossfire out. So just a nice, keep the board as clean as we can. So that was that. And then we just reveal our encounter card, which is going to be another side scheme. Yeah. We're giving Drang a real beating here. <laughs> not having too much trouble with them. So that's just going to not do much at all. Gets four threat. And it amplifies if it sticks around. We will see if that happens. Okay, back to us. We're starting our turn Alter Ego, so the techniques don't trigger. And we don't have any to play, and I don't have any way to draw any cards. So I guess I'm just going to go to hero form. Now we have 18 damage. Drang is stunned, so he's not going to get to attack us. So we might not even bother to remove that cannon aid, because there's not going to be an activation to boost anyway. Actually, before I go to hero form, real quick, just because I can... I'm not planning on playing Mockingbird, so I'll use her to play the Crew Quarters, just so I can heal for one, in case we end up caring about that, and go up to eight. And now I'll flip to Hero Form. Didn't really change anything. And I could have used the ship for that, but that's fine. I'm just going to do the ship and a double resource to do a Lethal Intent for three, so I get to trigger three techniques. And we'll just do both Weapon Masters for 8 damage. Bring Drang down to 10. And we'll do the Wide Stance. Look at the top 3. We can discard 1, put the other 2 back. Well, there's some nasty cards. Oh, there was one more minion in there. I remembered I miscounted, so we could have gotten a couple there. Well, we didn't, though. So I can discard one of these, and then he's stunned, so whatever card I leave on top is going to be my... Encounter card, so I'm just going to continue to make it real easy on myself, because I don't see why I wouldn't. And we will discard, uh, let's see, Corruptor. We'll let Shadows be the boost card for next time. Not that big of a deal. I don't know if there's going to be a next time. So the blockade is going to come out. So that was our lethal intent that triggered the three techniques. He is down to 10. I've got an energy and a global logistics in my hand. I can't really do much. I could global logistics, I suppose, to set up my next hand. Sure, let's do that. So I'll exhaust the field agent and play global logistics to discard or to look at the top four cards of a player deck or the encounter deck. I'll look at my deck. So one, two, three, four, and I can discard, put them on top, put them on bottom, whatever I want to do. So yeah, there's nothing here that's going to deal any damage. Let's see. Well, no, we've we've got this in the bag, so it doesn't matter. I'm just going to put them all top. It's not going to matter, actually. And I'll just hold on to this energy in my hand. Nebula is going to attack for two. And I think poor Drang is just on his way out. Unless I'm forgetting something crucial. We can even use the Milano to remove th three threat from here, I guess. Sure, why not? And we're going to ready up. We got our tough. We got our people. And that is that. We're going to hold on to the energy. And we get evasive maneuvering. Ah, uh, hopefully that's the last time I do that. Chance encounter, lethal intent, and a surveillance team. Thanks for coming, Shield, but we didn't really need you. So this is going up to 6, since I didn't bother to remove any of the threat. So 6 of 12. This gets its fourth one. It's going to hit 2 indirect damage. I'll just let it ping my tough. And then Drang wants to attack, but he's stunned. And my encounter card is going to be the blockade, and all it is is a crisis with four threat. Now, that Drang is at eight, and I start my turn. Both Weapon Masters fire, dealing eight damage. And he is down to zero. And that is a win for Nebula and Justice. Kind of a shield deck, but in the end, not really. And man, I know I said at the beginning, I thought it might be a little bit of a Drang beatdown, but... That was really a Drang me down. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Drang, if I made you look bad there. But you know what? It was still fun, and I don't mind an easy win every now and again. I'm glad we got to make Nebula look good. Hopefully I didn't make some crucial mistake in there that's going to tarnish a otherwise very easy victory. But like I said, I don't mind a shorter one every now and then so that I can get right to the part that people are here to see. All right, we've seen Rocket, we've seen Nebula, and we've seen... SPDR, so who is going to be the fourth in my series of favorite heroes? We'll do the hero first this time. Oh, I must have so much trouble with this lid. All right. 
This one seems good. Who's it gonna be? I look forward to this so much every time. All righty, all righty. It is careful, careful. Who is it? Who is it? It's red. Oh, Scarlet Witch. Yes, a top four solo hero according to my infallible ranking system from the video the other day. Wasn't infallible at all, but putting her towards the top was very accurate, I believe. So, will this be the third Justice game in a row, or are we finally going to mix it up? Oh, aggression. Scarlet Witch in aggression. You know, that works out well for me, because, you know, I've mentioned before in some other videos, I don't particularly enjoy playing aggression in solo very much. But, you know, certain heroes certainly can make it work, and she's one of them. Any hero that can manage the board well without need of the aspect cards, you know, Scarlet Witch can definitely do the thwarting, it is really fun for me to play in aggression. So I'm really looking forward to the, really looking forward to this. I'm glad it turned out this way. So, yes. But who is Scarlet Witch going to aggressively come after? This one seems good. Feels like this one might have two mod sets or multiples. This feels a little bit thicker. It is... Oh, yes, Spiral. I have to say, I was very tempted to just put all three of the Mojo scenarios in here because they're just so cool. But I went with Spiral because I feel like she's probably my favorite. It's hard to tell. I really like all three of them, but I didn't want to just put three mojo ones in here even though they're also good so and i already paired what i did you know because you're you're really meant to play the mojo ones with the mojo mod sets so and you know i couldn't quite do these randomly so i did hand pick my three favorite because i really wanted to play spiral with my three favorite of the mojo mod sets so we have fantasy which we did see recently with the venom game against venom goblin and the horror one just i think the the whole concept of the Kraken and the vampire with the, the stakes is just so cool. And then the Western one, because the game of cards is a really cool card. And I love this gunslinger. There's so much flavor. I think it's one of the most flavorful encounter cards in the entire game. That when this minion comes out, he has quick strike. But if you spend two lightning, you get to attack him before he attacks you. And so maybe you can get the draw on him. You can kill him before he can even attack you. I just, that's amazing. So I am incredibly excited for this. I've played Spiral a few times. I didn't get to play Mojo a ton before I jumped into this. But uh, yeah, having I don't think I played her with this particular combination. They're all just so fun. So I want to tackle her in Expert because I've played her on Standard a few times and it wasn't too challenging. It was fun, but it wasn't overly difficult. The fact that, you know, she gets three teleport counters and then two teleport counters makes her... I should just keep these on the screen. Makes her, you know, kind of easy to, once you corner her, you've got a few turns to go after her. But in Expert, she starts out only getting two teleport counters before she leaves. And then, I think, in, th uh, oh, and then the, oh, wait. Yeah, that was the stage two. Okay, well, I'll have to find the stage three card. But I'm not quite sure because I haven't played her in Expert yet. I suspect she'll be a lot more challenging. So, really looking forward to that. And the mod sets aren't too difficult, so the Expert should be fine, too. Plus... You know, we're playing Scarlet Witch, who is so very strong. And aggression, you know, when we do corner her, that aggression is going to be able to just beat her down quickly. So that's going to be a really, really fun game to look forward to. And hopefully I won't get to it very soon. It's uh, This is the third play of Christmas, and we're already almost halfway through December. So uh, I'm falling a little bit behind. I'm definitely doing my best. I'm just going to try to get the rest of these out as quickly as I can. The last week, maybe I'll just be putting them out two a day. I don't know how it's going to work out, but really, really want to get these all out in the month of December. So I'll just see how it goes. But as always, I want to thank you so much for joining me. And I uh, hope you're having a wonderful holiday season as we're getting closer and closer to Christmas. I know I'm getting very excited and very busy, but very excited. And uh, I just really look forward to seeing you next time we get up in game. Take care, folks. Bye-bye.